band, so big champions are available. The Sejuani and the Renekton first and foremost, I think are very, very powerful. The Corky could also be very important to you now that the Lucian's gone. Some of that engage potential as well from Duo might take center stage if they can grab it for NIP. NIP ones known to innovate in the meta, especially uh, depending on the strategies as well, employing the lane swaps last split to uh, very great benefit in their run in the playoffs. But here they need to find a win no matter what in this Rumble stage. Don't want to start 0-3. They go with the Sejuani as the first pick. I think we might be seeing ourselves a Renekton lock-in for Breathe. That would make a lot of sense. You could also look towards a Lilia for Tarzan on pick two and three at that point. You might also snatch up the Corky for Xiaohu. So I think your top side is probably looking like Renekton, maybe a Corky, and then also the Lilia or something like that for Tarzan, which can do very well with that Renekton. It's not quite the Nidalee in terms of early bullying, but we've seen exactly how powerful that can be. And what do you know? Now that deer is showing its face. We've got a crocodile, we've got a boar, we've got a deer. We might have a couple of goats in this game too. Can we just, like, have a, uh, before we get too far into it, have a little conversation yeah. of why teams are so willing to just let this pick, which has time and time again found so much success. Yes, there's some moments that it doesn't, but a blind Renekton being constantly found in the LPL just feels so weird to me. Now, the thing is, I don't like the blind Renekton if your top laner is not sufficiently good enough. Because if you walk into a Renekton lane and you stop him from having a laning phase, then yeah, the Renekton's not very good. Renekton, the win condition of Renekton is win lane so hard that you can go into mid game and be a mid game monster and you win the game before the power spike runs out. If you fail in the laning phase, if you fail as a team to set up the mid game team fights, or you fail to set that, set behind some of the bad matchups like the cannon, which can keep that Renekton down, then the Renekton loses value. If you are one of these select few, Breathe is one of them. I think Arla's another one. In fact, they did very similar to NIP, did AL with Arla as their top laner. Bin, 369, the top tier of Renekton, we even saw Wayward earlier today. Um, they are the ones which can get so much value out of this champion that you can make it game winning. We even saw that from Breathe getting set up for in this one too. And now when you've got something like that Yoni in the mid lane, they can also be a side lane threat. Wayward have two solo laners with this Renekton being a part of it that can walk into mid game and look to end the game before those power spikes of that Renekton particularly start to run out. And the Yone has his own power spike in a lot of ways. Now the early oh, game's going to be... on pass, yeah. Yeah, the, the early game is not going to be as fun, though, uh, trying to trade into that level 3 moment for the Yone versus the Corky. But again, you have a lot of strength in this top side of the map for Weibo. Last time around, they opted into taking a very safe bottom side to kind of support that as well. We're already in the second phase. It's the Ziggs by Weibo. And now, um, Weibo are going to remove the Kai'Sa probably because they need to get rid of magic damage from the side of NIP. NIP, they have double tank right now, which aren't going to provide a huge amount of damage. And they've got this Corky in the mid lane, which is physical damage. If you remove the magic damage, and there only are, only are really two options for bot lane, the Kai'Sa and the Ziggs right now. Um, Weibo, if they lock in something tanky as a support, they could look towards a Braum because of that. And if you get yourself to Ninja Tabi at that point, and just a little bit of HP, it is very, very hard to get through um, full kind of armor building tanks. They do choose to remove the Ash instead. Maybe they're afraid of the Ash Braum, but on the whole, it looks like NIP are going to be overloading in physical damage. So Weber might look to lock in something tanky enough to make use of armor stacking. And there's still a lot of options on the table for that. Obviously, the Nautilus, the Rels, things like that. I do like the focus of that misfortune. Take it away from the Wombo combo of Weibo, though. And it will be the Callista Light Classic gone away now as we go to see what the counter pick is going to be on the table for Weibo. So, what are they looking for? They could go towards the center again. I mean, why did you just not go towards the center? It's not like you're going to be contested on something like um, the Orn at that point, and IP would then lose themselves the, the ability to have something like, well, I doubt they'd be looking for the center Orn themselves. But uh, they lock in that. That means they'll have a better engage option, and then suddenly that Orn looking very likely as the last pick they'll have. Yone is engaged, Lily is engaged, Senna with the ult over the top, and of course, Orn finishing off that combo. NIP, ah, what do you do about this one? Because you'd like to play towards strong side bot lane because you've got a Cassante top side. What have you got for that? But it's not exactly something like a, a Draven player necessarily. Going towards the Zeri. Zeri Lulu might just be the damage they need. They want to play towards this bot lane. We haven't seen that many enchanters in the meta, though. Mm -hmm. so this is a very different style of bot lane. And it's not Dwo necessarily uh, having the impact of teaming up with Aki as often. Now it will be the supportal counter pick, all pivotal here for Weibo. 
but on all, all actuality, it's just a continuation of what has been so strong and so ruthlessly executed by Weibo. Weibo almost had the perfect game in game one. They lost a dragon and a tower. They didn't lose a single kill. And this composition has a lot of similarities to the last one. You do still have that Renekton early lane dominance. You have Tarzan on AP jungler, which can look to leverage off of these lanes. It's not the Nidalee in terms of the early game wrecking ball in the same way, but Weibo will still be looking to have Tarzan moving around the map as a wrecking ball because he's still absolutely fine into that Sujuani. Weibo later on will still want to be pulling out that Orn big engage, opening up options for Breathe and Xiaohu to find their way into the back line at the same time. And you have one very clear avenue for Weibo as it goes to those team fights. NIP maybe a little bit differentiated in kind of their avenues forward, but it's also maybe a uh, rinsing of the consciousness from that first game. It was a rough one for sure, but we know these veterans are not ones to back down from a fight. We asked the question, what happens if Rookie is the only carry? You need somebody else to step up, but now it's can Rookie carry on this Corky? Something he's been very comfortable on. But the biggest thing is Xiaohu had his number in that first one. Both these guys in new chapters of their legacy. They spent seven plus years with the organizations that made them famous. Rookie has a heckin' world championship with Invictus Gaming and a lot of titles for Xiaohu with RNG. But now a pivotal game, a series that NIP do not want to drop in their home arena in Shenzhen. We're headed into game two with Weibo brewing up a storm. Getting into it with all the Jios, all the energy given. We'll see if that is going to make the difference for NIP. Shanji on his classic Kashanji champ. And uh, I do wonder if he's going to be able to make the difference here. Tried to so hard on the cannon last time around as well. And uh, I think this early game is going to mean a lot depending on where these jungles path to Nymera. Absolutely. You know, we know that the Lilia can do really well in tank matchups. Really does feel like uh, Tarzan on this champion has the ability to bully out Aki again. One of the big things that we were talking about leading into this series was the fact that, you know, Aki has struggled to find himself onto AP junglers. It's made him a bit typecast, and it does mean that against the better junglers, get locked out. Breed is walking up at the level one to make sure that they can. Uh, just get some eyes on this Sejuani, which gives Tarzan the ability to use maybe his strongest weapon as a player, which is that early pathing, which he has been so, so potent at before. He's really just been able to stranglehold a lot of jungles. And Aki needs to keep his head above water and maybe Tarzan's fist off his throat here, as we will see a bit of jungling invade initiated by Tarzan. Well, I mean, that uh, early walk-in from Breathe means that uh, Weibo know that Aki is starting topside, won't be able to defend his Raptors, so it'll at least be those Raptors taken. Aki, with that smite early on, should be able to get down towards bot side fairly quickly. Breathe dodging out one of those cues there from Shanji too. You know, last game, Breathe was in a losing matchup versus the Ken and still managed to walk away with it. Now yeah. he's in a winning matchup. And that's going to potentially get much worse. Well, does spot out Tarzan. They could potentially look to force oh him away. Goodness. Tarzan. Is he going to get level 3? If he doesn't get level 3, he might end up dying here. He needs to try and take this last one. He might have gone too far. surrounded! Tarzan's early plans have gone awry. And it's Aki looking to clean him up. Going to flash over just in case. He is buying a lot of time. Aki going to try to chase him down. It's the battle of the four-legged companions here. Tarzan running away with a little bit of the speed up of the passive 2. Aki, Arctic Assault, but it's the watch out. Even oh. still not enough time. And it's the kill. Aki going first blood for NIP. Big read from Tarzan. Could have just got the one camp and could have got out. Tried to go for a little bit more than he uh, could could really swallow at that point. So Tarzan gives Weibo the first death of the series in game two. Deathless from game one. Not started at this time. So NIP get themselves the first blood and the first kill on the board. Tarzan still going to be able to go rip through this top side farm. But on the whole, Tarzan much further behind the way he should be. Given his little bit of greed in that early pathing. 
And now it enables Aki to be a little bit more aggressive on his own right. Gonna go for the bot lane scuttle here since they have push in mid and bot, which was uh, allowing a little bit more ease of access. It feels like for Aki that maybe that first game allowed in a lot of regards. Now, Rookie is the one that has to burn his flash in mid lane. That'll be revisited, no doubt. Yeah, Shahu getting solo flash there. He's down in CS, which does mean his first back is going to be worse than Rookie's. Both of them will be looking to teleport in uh, soon after this point. But Shahu getting that flash definitely does help. You're absolutely right. Let's see whether that can continue to be a point of uh, pressure for Weibo. Just like this top lane is going to be a point of pressure for Breathe as well. This Renekton has been such a power pick in the LPL recently. We keep revisiting this point. The Renekton is a power pick if you are good enough at it, and if you are good <laughs> enough as a team at it from using it through lighting phase. Breathe absolutely has been. That's such a funny conversation to have. It's a, it's a ride that you have to be this tall to, to ride on, I guess. <laughs> exactly, yes. In the LPL. You must be this tall to ride the Renekton roller coaster. And it looks like Godzilla somehow. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it, it has been really terrifying. That's why I kind of love that conversation we had in the draft about what this means for the league as a whole. Because we are seeing a lot of our best top laners just be willing to blind uh, a lot of very brave picks in the top lane matchup. But I do want to take a look back to the jungle pathings and where we're looking at for there. Because we have at least the first neutral objectives coming out on the map at least the dragon up last time around not a lot of focus on that though no it really was more about um going into lanes getting skirmishes done if it's all possible the grubs are quicker to take from uh, particularly the ap junglers very quickly to take them see that bot lane um light and crisp they haven't lost the plate just yet and they're keeping it completely fine in farm so that's going well for them as well, the lanes from Weibo doing pretty well. It's just that jungle matchup, which is a bit concerning, considering the fact that Tarzan went down for first blood. Yeah. Doing just fine in the pathing and clearing, though. Dominus was popped. Shanji is going to end up burning his flash to get on the other side of the big croc. Breathe having a bit of an advantage now on top side with a CS differential there as well. He's going to get the back TP back out, and maybe there Wait. can be a contest for Tarzan over the grubs. Yeah, I mean... Breed just did that without his first back. He did that with a Doran's Blade. He's going to go get himself a full phage and a Log Sword after that point. So Breed um, getting that level 6 to level 5 advantage. Aki doesn't have the level 6 just yet. Breed's teleported in. I think Aki should not be taking this fight too lightly, but Shanji does have ults. Oh, that might be twice now. Tarzan getting caught out a little bit. Shanji is carving him up. And that's Shanji picking up this second kill of the game for NIP. Night and day from game number 1. That's a little mini mechanic you sometimes see at Sejuani. The E, when you get that passive uh, of that permafrost fully done, um, does have a slight tiny knock up on it, and that can stop any movement. So the Lilia E gets interrupted with my threat. Now with no smite, Weibo can't really contest this in the same way too very quickly going over to the side of NIP. Despite the fact that Breathe and Xiaohu had some decent advantages in terms of the trading, they couldn't get there to help that in time. That was a little bit awkward, Chris not timing the combo there. Can't get the knockoff chain on the post tick in the end. It is going to be the one grub secured by Weibo, so maybe denying that uh, grub again, at least at this point, if they aren't going to get anything from that. Now we look back into the map resets here coming through, and I also want to circle into what the strengths look like for both these two teams, because, yes, Tarzan has gone down already pretty far, and they wanted to be the team that was very proactive but I, I still feel like they have a lot of options going into the game later on. Yeah, I mean, so NIP strengths are they have really good tank frontline with an enchanter, front to back team fights, use the shields, use the engage that you have um, to try and pick off that first target. Breathe doesn't have ult just yet. He's going to be 1v2. He's going to get the Dominus. He does have the Dominus, but uh, he's completely CC chain there. He's going to get the flash out in the end. And you have Aki chasing him down. He has flash coming up available too. And NIP desperately want to make this play happen. Don't get baited by going over the other side. Breathe trying to get the outplay. The permafrost there. There's the flash. From Aki Shaohu has now come from nowhere and picked up one of the kills in the end. Bot side, we had a kill onto Fotik going through, traded onto Crisp as well. I'm sure we'll get a replay of that one. So, NIP firing off a lot better in the early game than in game one. They've got themselves, well, four more kills than they had in game one. So, hey, that's going well for them. They keep themselves their advantages. Um, across the board, going to a replay of what happened in this bot side. Chris walks up to the wave a little too far. Zeri does that thing when she goes over a wall. That's completely fair and balanced gameplay. Fotik has the uh, Lulu behind them. 
Zeri ultimate is really, really nasty. It gives you a lot of gold, oh a uh, lot of damage rather. But turns out Orn has ridiculous base damage. This can very much turn the kill back into you as well. Great turnaround at the end there with the last W though. Flash away from Lulu, that could be important though. That actually can be very much revisited. All flashes are down on bot side uh, and all summoner spells except for the cleanse of light. Now mid lane, uh, Shahu was pushed off of the wave pretty heftily by the combination of NIP and then he'll move over to this dragon to secure yet more objectives for themselves. Yeah, NIP really getting themselves on the board. Now we're talking about NIP strengths. They have really good front line which can kind of engage, use the Lulu shields in the same way. I will say, Weibo also have pretty good front to back because they have a center horn that that's something which they're not bad at. They're probably worse at it than the uh, um, the Sejuani Kasanse because there's just another tank there. But what what Weibo bring, which NIP don't necessarily have the best way to deal with, is a lot of flank threat. Shahu on one flank, breathe on the other. Tarzan also with the swirl seeds can start opening options too. So Weibo want to try and make sure that NIP um, when they start setting up that phalanx, they can get around that front line and get on someone in the back line. Wouldn't surprise me to see Draw go towards the Mikhail's quite early into this game to stop um, that Lilting Lullaby being such a killer ability as it is currently. Tarzan though, currently at zero and two, not the threat which he was on that Nidalee in that game one. His early pathing, which is so often his strength, has fallen apart. Not quite sure why Shenji is here, but he should get out safely. <laughs> He will have a lot of dashes to get away, but yeah, that early pathing definitely coming back to bite Weibo a little bit after such a clean game in game number one, but honestly, uh, it's pretty much uh, script as written for Weibo in the consistently inconsistent category. It's such a dominant game number one, you also have to love them at their worst in some regards, it's not the worst here, but uh, we do have 30 seconds for the Grubbies to come up. It would be... Very good for NIP to try to get this one down. Their siege is very potent, and they could get five total. Particularly when you've got the uh, the winning jungle matchup where Sejuani can kind of come and hover over your lane. And Forky currently up in CS against Xiaohu as well by a significant margin. Xiaohu chose to, cho chose to take some better trades. Forky chose to get more of that CS, and he's ended up getting uh, the better of it so far. And IP could use those grubs very, very effectively into the mid game if they can get Rookie ahead on this pick, which has so much carrying before. Breathe is walking down. He is level 9. He's going to put a ward down. Not look for the massive fight just yet, though. Do you see Tarzan just clearing up towards top side? Might try and contest for the last couple. And a nice little knockback there. Rookie has made it first. There's the flash. He's coming through and immediately engaging Shanji. They've gotten Breathe completely out. And there's the Dawning Shadow to try to save him. But he's already gone and out. There is the re-engage from Tarzan. Lilting low by TP back. They're going to let the timer come through. Fate seal as well. Damage done. Xiaohu, he's going to pick up some kills here. And that's huge. Da -da -da -da. Double kill for Xiaohu. And now NIP, they're in some trouble. Tarzan has been taken up a storm. And Crisp has made his debut up here in this top fight. Botic going to have to flip his way out of that one. But Weibo have completely flipped this early game on its head. I think someone forgot about the extra global. Crisp brings the teleport to play, brings his ultimate, slaps it a boat after that point too. And now there's a 3-0 and o Yone at the back of this play. NIP, the thing which they can't deal with very well is the flank threat from Weibo later into the game. If that flank threat has three kills already, that's going to become that much more dangerous. Crisp really helps set up that too by kind of scattering the team and uh, kind of like helping in that second part of it. Breathe gets outplayed by Shanji. He goes in for an all-in yeah. here. Shanji gets the shunt into the ball and uh, gets the flash over to make sure his all-out brings uh, brings himself away from the Lilia. If the Lilia is there, then he dies. He breathes, gets put into a 1v3, the center ult. I don't think it was reactive in time because they just didn't expect the flash ult, but still, they have overcommitted a little bit too much. Just because of the fact that the Renekton is down doesn't mean that there's no one else that can do damage. Tarzan and Xiaohu really make their entrance alongside this bit. Xiaohu picking up that gold is massive. Right? <laughs> oh, no! It's tragedy. Yeah. He picks up the kill yeah. as revenge there, you know? I mean, he gets the kill. Um, so basically, he's summoned the ult. The way he had to walk around that terrain meant he was just outside the ult wit, so it looks a little awkward. Because if he walks to the play, he can't hit that ultimate. He would have had to flash over the wall to get the ult connection, and I guess he didn't want to commit that. And, uh, yeah. A little bit, uh of a topsy-turvy early game, something that was going so well for NIP, their strengths and things being blunted a bit. And then Aki now trying to make those resharpen here as they sharpen their edge against Chris by himself. The knockup coming through, the juggling 
is going to be clutch. Focus. Oh, no. You got to be careful. The wild growth comes through. One more shot, and that's not enough. They but, heal but it. The center ult's up in two. It's up in one. The maybe, center ult can kill. Maybe. He's been very, very nope. careful. Swing and a miss. He was looking for it. Can't quite get the kill. Xiaohu looking for Rookie. He's had his number the entire time. There's the flash out of Rookie. So, grand scheme of things, that's a dive towards bot side. They can't really stay for that much more. They get the kill, but they do lose themselves two flashes on two carries. That is quite concerning. Now, um, Light loses his flash, Chris loses his flash. I think in this game, because Xiaohu is so fed, losing the flashes on NIPs carries matter more. They're the ones which are going to have to flash out of a Yoni ult, which is exactly what we just saw. Weibo, they lose themselves that kill, but I feel like getting those flashes could be something that they could get themselves an extended advantage from. I just want to check in as we have uh, first item pretty much completed across the board. Blade of the Room King for Xiaohu will be pretty massive there. As you see, plays were pretty split evenly across the table. Chris going to be a little bit careful there. Oh, Breathe has found a, a wild gyrocopter. I think he's in a lot of trouble, though. It's looking like the Godzilla movie again. It's a helicopter taking down a big, <laughs> big dinosaur, but uh, he'll be in trouble. Did you watch Minus One? I really enjoyed it. I haven't, but I'm that thinking about like the 2000s are... Godzilla so... movie. Oh, there was the 2014 one as well, though, which was the, <laughs> the westernized version of it. Which, uh, you know, the, apparently there were like some jokes slash complaints about it because it looked like Godzilla because it was originally just a guy in a suit walking around. Apparently, the CGI version, it looked like it was really chubby compared to the original designs. Like, yo, where did you where, where did you go eat your fast food, buddy? <laughs> well, like, where did that come from? I really enjoyed mine as well, though. I thought it was really fun. Apparently, it's coming out in a black and white version. They're doing it in like a no-color version, which is very novel. I don't think I've seen it exactly before. I wonder if maybe there's inspiration for the Renekton finding so much fun here. I don't know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, no, they really thought that's a great movie that released this. Yep, <laughs> it's all about Renekton, baby. Give me that kaiju. <laughs> Give me the kaiju. Hey, I mean, so far, so good, I guess, in that regard. They are going to look at this top outer turret here for Weibo, try to take down another one. This will be the second turret. Now, Shanji has been doing some work on bottom side, left alone. Going to do some damage to a tier two down here by himself. Crisp has a teleport. That is definitely an extra bonus. Shao, who's done this before? Shao, oh, the Q. That goes the old catches him. him. Valkyrie and Rookie shut down yet again. Shao, who? He's 4 and 0, and this man is having a Renaissance series right now. Shanji wants to shut him down. He says, That's a lot of gold, and they're going to find him too. Fotik and try to get the angle here. You got to get the knock into the wall. The Alco Gaming, he's going to try to pull it back out of Fotik. Wild Grove used to what? get the double knock up now as well. Fotik going to clean him up for 600 smackaroos. Do you really want to pull double ults for that? Okay, this is the reason they wanted to pull double ults. They wanted to get that kill as quickly as possible because you have Chris um, pushing down towards bot side and a full Herald push into the mid lane to get an inner turret for Breathe. Votic gets the shot down on Xiaohu. That does mean that Votic is going to be much more of a threat going later into this game. But even with just the two grubs, Weibo will be able to get themselves a lot of tower damage across the board. Once again, Weibo, the cross maps are looking pretty effective. And that's what I just always return to. It's like... The cleanliness of some of these decisions they make. Yes, there's a lot of questionable ones. But then you just have these moments of genius that come through. And right now, they, they all of a sudden just take four turrets. A ton of standing gold going their way. And they have a pretty hefty advantage here as we go back into the replay. Yeah, so Shahu's been doing this a lot. He charges up his Q off of a jungle camp, uses the Q first, gets himself the E range, catches midway through the Valkyrie. No flash this time. He blew that last time trying to escape for Shahu. Can't do it this time. Xiaohu, what a magnificent return to form. Yep. I think that he had a pretty great series versus LNG2 on an individual level. Um, I think that compared to group stage, compared to everything else since Worlds last year, Xiaohu has looked so much better. And, you know, we were at the start of summer, we were talking about it as casters and as a community, I suppose. Well, at what point do we say, is Xiaohu ever coming back to form? It's been a full year at that point. I think he is really at the last moment turned it back on in a time for Weibo to, you know, this Ascension group, maybe make a push for Worlds again. NIP, they looked like they would be the third, fourth best team coming out of spring, depending on how teams moved around coming into summer. Um, we might be getting to the point where Rookie, once again, might be at risk at missing an international event. And Weibo, even though I don't think currently they are the fourth best team, they are looking better than they were. And if that X improvement continues, the question becomes a lot more open as to who could make it through as our top four teams. I think BLG top esports, they're pretty much a lock based on current form. Well, we'll see. Weird things happen in the LPL, but they're pretty much a lock. 
Then after that point, you've got anyone's legend, you have JDG, you have Weibo, maybe LNG can keep going as well. Where do all of these teams start to land? It is a very difficult question, especially with uh, these single round robins and how important each one of the series are and, and the way that some of the early series have gone. But we're going to start getting some of the really, really top tier matchups here in the Rumble stage, especially in Group Ascend. And this was labeled to be one of them. I was very excited to see what uh, NIP versus Weibo was going to represent here. And we have had a much brighter segment of gameplay from NIP in this game number two, but Weibo have resurged into this one with about a 2,000 gold lead. And I think our Tiger King of Spring has borne his fangs in summer now. And these two games back to back have been very strong for them. They'll get resets out and get back onto the map for this Dragon setup. Really want to highlight as well going into that dragon. You know, early game, it was Aki running over Tarzan. Aki did a great job of taking him down. Tarzan is still 8,000 gold up at this point. He has himself that um, Seekers as well, which is a huge point of power when it comes through um, into this point in the game. First fight, we can get that stasis. He has the flash. I think Weibo are ready to fight. It's even-ish in gold. Slight lead over to Weibo. So the big question is, can NIP find themselves that idyllic I, I, idyllic rather, team fight, front to back, playing behind the front line, or can Weibo get themselves that big flank and the big team fight engages from Tarzan and Chris that split the carries apart from NIP. Now is the time for Rookie and Fotik to regain that confidence, to regain that team fight aspect that they were known so well for all the way on V5. And we'll have to have a monumental positioning performance in a lot of these fights. Dragon not even going to be contested here by an IP. Yeah. Well, not just yet. They're kind of sticking around. They wouldn't necessarily want to get this up to Weibo if they can help it, but still, I don't really think they're in a position. Aki might look for a steal. Not going to go towards it. NIP realize the better positioning from Weibo. And they back off. So, Weibo, they get themselves an important objective, and now Baron has spawned as well. Weibo will probably look to see if they can get themselves into the enemy jungle, get themselves a pick, and see if they can force NIP into some um, complex decisions around the Baron like they did in that last game. It is not from a large advantage again. NIP, they will probably want to be picking off someone in the side lanes in their own right, because uh, they do currently have Shanji in a completely fine place in this matchup versus the Renekton. It's not like the Renekton is going to roll over this game in the way that we've seen Breathe and a number of other Renekton's do so before. It's not going to be the main character of this one, and NIP need to use that to their advantage. They really have to. Uh, I think Breathe will still, if he finds the right target, have a lot of say in if you're allowed to live or not. But uh, we are getting those second item completions now coming across. Uh, Xiaohu especially with that shield bow. I mean, pretty strong, but you also have a little bit more of that AoE teamfight damage from Fotik as he has completed the Runans. Yeah, so typically, Runan's pretty good against just kind of sitting there and gunning down multiple targets in the front to back teamfights. It can really help you with that one. So you're looking to kind of get as much AoE down as possible, not necessarily gunning through that first target, but just trying to get as much spread damage across the team. Rookie can very much help in regards to that uh, single target damage, though, because he does have that Moravano on that triforce. Very, very good. He just launches everything in that single target. He also applies the AoE as well. Weibo turning up towards the top side. It's worse to aim for them in towards that top side because they do have that immobile Lilia. Doesn't have like a, a wall crossing ability. It means that it's harder for you to escape from the river. And IP might be able to use that to their advantage. Weibo pushing out mid lane, looking to get some control over top side and force NIP again into those macro decisions around Baron, which they lost out on in that first game. They're moving around the Doom Squad right now for Weibo. Just had a moment's breath and engage potentially if somebody gets caught overextending though. So NIP want to go for it. Aki's going to be the main target for those engages to go forward. And honestly, he's really the only one for the team of NIP that can kick it off. And it's not like you have a support on the side of Weibo that's going to be building a Mikhail's. In fact, we've seen that Mikhail's from Dwar. We can say that potentially come out. That can really, really help in terms of the single target Lilia ultimate. Xiaohu has that Q stack up. You can't hit Mikhail's that. NIP walking in to defend their own jungle. Do you need to be careful, though? They go a little bit too far beyond the vision. It's get very dangerous very, very quickly. Very scary. They're going to use the Lilting Lullaby there onto Rookie. He is okay from the moment. There is the push in top side. They're getting split. And now Breed has come over from this bot side. He's going to get the CC chain bait sealed as well, too. The all out comes through. Shanji trying to get something back here as they've already lost one. Dro is gone. Now they've got the lockdown on Fotik. He is going to burn the cleanse. 
He's got a lot of damage here. Breed finds the back line. No, he's locked down now as well. Sanji, there's that all out, and now he's able to do a lot of damage. Lockup comes on to Aki, but they still have a lot of health bars to deal with. Tarzan, he's going golden, buying time. Xiaohu is looking for his entrance, but it's Rookie who's finding his now. And Botic, they've stepped up when he's asked them the most, Nymera. Botic finds the AoE team fight. He gets to sit behind his tanks and get huge damage across Weibo. Weibo couldn't quite get themselves the big team fight into the big flanks, which they wanted. Even though Aki wasn't there in the front line, he was off to the side. Weibo just about lose out on that. That was a really split affair. It starts with the splash over the wall, but Tarzan gets the old on rookie. Doesn't even blow the Mikhail's though. The extra follow-up basically doesn't come through. The damage from it does technically get procced by the old ultimate, but it's not that much. Breed tries to get that really big flank, but because because of the Lulu, because of the cleanse, because of the flash, Botic is very, very safe to get himself a lot of damage. They kill the Lulu, but it's not like they have killed the Zeri after this point. He was still getting through all of those Zeri alt stacks, continuing to get damage down. Has that cleanse, he can start playing through the backline. Now he doesn't have that summoner again to play through the next time, and he won't have that flash either. But for now, this is what NIP wanted to see from the ready carry, especially when he has such a big carry burden in this game. Uh, this is the exact moment to shine that you needed when things were starting to look glum. Botic shines his light on on through, and it isn't on Weibo's side. Now, NIP moving as five. They have a lot of strength in their team fight potential now that they're hitting these item spikes. Three items for Botic now on the Zeri. Very, very powerful. And also, for 25 minutes now, it's not a 15-minute tiny team fight with a lane lead from Renekton. A breathe is not going to be that same Renekton as that last game. Um, so this is the problem with the Renekton. If you outlast that first 20, 25 minutes, the Renekton does get a lot less value. You are looking now realistically from way before that big ultimate combination. Yeah, there is still a very powerful Yone. If Yone catches your carries, good luck. Especially if you manage to catch that Lulu in the engage. You can't just immediately pull the Polymorph for the ultimate. Mm -hmm. Xiaohu could do some team fight winning damage right from the off. Tarzan needs to also watch for his team fight impact too, because if he gets multiple people with that with that ultimate, he can't because multiple people. It feels like this Infernal Soul might just be a deciding factor in this series. If Weibo can continue stacking this one up, it gets so difficult to deal with the amount of damage they can just ramp up into you. They are already halfway down, done with the dragon. NIP on the edges of this engage. Aki maybe trying to stop it, but will be backed off of. They both secure that one. Now they're looking for even more. Rookie on a bit of a flank here. Does have a lot of damage to pack into this one. Tarzan locked down now as well. There's the CC chain donning shadow across. Look at the carries on the side. They got the double CC knockdown now as Breathe is trying to take down Zhuo. Shanji's in some trouble now too. Weibo might have found it. Rookie, he's locked down by Shao. They got him. That's the carries going down one by one for NIP. And the pajamas might have just been caught sleeping there. Yeah, well, I think maybe they'd prefer to have some nicer dreams and that one is setting to a bit of a nightmare. First game, not a single kill. This one looked a lot better, but they just don't have the summoners this time to make their carries do the damage. Rookie's getting shut down by Xiaohu. Fodix doesn't have the flash to sit in that pocket. And now with Wobo killing so many members, they're gonna go towards that Baron, tank it up as best they can and force NIP to see if they have anything left to contest. Botic, he's 3-1, three, three items. We said his AoE is huge. He has lightning crash. Maybe this is the moment. This is the miracle. Aki's getting focused now. Lightning crashes. Botic against the world now as the Baron's going down. Everyone's just clearing out of dodge and Botic can do nothing to stop the advances of Weibo. It's been a lot, uh, lot less clean game from Weibo. The early jungle pathing from Tarzan was read by Aki, and that slowed down the game a lot. It has made this a good contest. Aki getting good engages onto Tarzan. I feel like Aki has been answering Tarzan pretty well in regards to that. But just look at the team fight positioning. Draw and Fotic, they're not behind their carry. They're split. They leave themselves open to the engage while their tanks are not in front of them. I feel like the positioning of Fotic and Draw really end up solving this game. Um, for the side of Weibo. It feels a little bit sad because I think that Fodic has had a good game. I think that Draw of the Lulu has also had some decent impact. But in this team fight, to leave yourselves open against the wall for an Orn is just not it. As soon as you lose your front line right there in the choke and you're getting split back into the multi sections of the red side, it's just so difficult. You cannot win with this team composition if you are not together for an IP. And we've labeled that from the very beginning. They have such team fight strength and the go button yeah. from Aki, but Weibo have been picking them piece by piece apart. 
Yeah, and, and also I'd like to expand on that, Steve. Being together is not just all being in the same location at once. It's being positioned in the right way exactly. in regards to each other. You need the tank in front of your carries. You need to make sure that the engagement waypoint has to go through someone tanky first so they can maybe try and CC them and buy some extra space for the Zeri to use that insane mobility. Photic does have both summoners now. Draw also has Flash and Ult, which will help him either escape and engage or Flash forwards to get an ultimate or, or CC. Flash Polymorph can also be quite important to someone like a Yode. He has the Mercurial Scimitar though, though, and that is a nasty item. He also has an order upgraded Blade of the Rune Jinx, yeah. so that is going to be very, very powerful. Level 16, Xiaohu ready to pop. Looks like Weibo is ready to pop in IP. And the entire story so far has been one of uh, a little bit of sadness for NIP in this Rumble stage. Obviously starting 0-2, but having some really rough series already. And one of them to brink themselves from the edge of desperation going 0-3 in a single round. Robin is not a benefit to you. Now engage under turret. Multiple little ting lullaby. Chris can't hit the re-engage on the Ornhorn. Doesn't matter though. Aki almost going down. Donning Shadow across. Not going to get it. Mid lane is falling over to breathe. Four members strong down here from Weibo. They do have a lot of sustain, but Botic looking to step up. Look at Xiaohu though. He's on the side. Got to be careful. Swirl Seed does hit through. Tarzan has massive slows. Botic, he overextended, and Tarzan takes him down. Breathe is on the flank of all of this. Meanwhile, Baird buff is going to buff this one up for another 20 seconds. Breathe. Breathe. Going. It's literally Godzilla again! I don't know if they got enough helicopters to take him down. They finally do, but they're losing everything! That might as well be the Empire State Building! Yeah, these ninjas have been put on display. Their disguise is ripped off of them as Weibo. Reveal the vulnerabilities underneath. Weibo, great team fighting on the whole. Tarzan gets a multi-man swirl seed, which means that the Mikhails can't save everyone. Chris, once again, I don't know if you got CC'd out of an ultimate, but can't quite follow up. And Weibo, with that, they take themselves good gold. They pin the NIP back into their side. And because now NIP has spent so much time in their own base, they don't have good setup for the dragon. They are going to go towards it now. It's 20 seconds. Uh, 25 seconds until that spawns. Weibo have gotten themselves good resets. They've spent their gold and they can go down towards this objective, knowing that NIP are going to be slower to the objective as a whole unit. Zeri's only just coming back out onto the map. Yes, NIP get themselves that scuttle crab, but it's still not quite the setup they would have wanted. And you cannot rest on your laurels. There is a soul coming up, and it's an infernal soul for Weibo. We're gonna try to catch Crisp out before the fight. Tarzan over the wall, though. He's actually got some decent damage on Fotic. The double damage there if Crisp wanted to turn back around. Dragon was started up and pulled out, but NIP full presence here, right. at least besides Rookie. So Fotic, no flash, has cleanse, can survive through that lilting lullaby because of it. Breathe trying to zone. Oh, oh Rookie, no. Rookie's not here. They're gonna pull the so trigger, dangerous. absolutely. You go 10 times out of 10 on that one. Crisp gonna get the re-engage there as the dragon goes over to Weibo and that burning soul is gonna be burning NIP from the inside out. They're still trying to tussle. Fotic locked down, Fotic is gone. Rookie was nowhere to be seen as Breathe has been taking him out the whole time. Tarzan with a double kill as Rookie he finally takes down Breathe, but it's all for naught. There's TP coming to signal the end, and a triple kill for Tarzan. Welcome back to the league, my new age jungle king, as Weibo will make this day a short and quick one. A 2-0 on the cusp, as they will obliterate NIP time and time again and make good on the reunion from the placement stage. Where are you now, Waymo Doubters? Well, I'm right here. I was one of them. But after this series, after their rumble stage so far, you got to you got to accept, Weibo are looking really good. They're looking clean. They're looking like their map movements are much, much more evolved than they were earlier into summer. Yeah, this second game, maybe not as clean as the other one, but still, they managed to recover. They understood their win conditions. They understood that they could play around these big team fight flanks. And they were just a far more evolved team than NIP today. NIP, we said that they needed to go back to the drawing board at the start of groups. They had to figure out what they wanted to do about the AP jungle meta because Aki wasn't comfortable with it. They managed to do that. They managed to get Fotic into more comfortable spots because he was struggling a little bit on some of the traditional AD carries. And he went towards the utility AD carries a bit more to find himself value. It feels like they have to start that process again at the worst possible time. Yeah. Even if you make it through into playoffs directly from Ascension, 
The problem is your seeding might- <laughs> Shario hits himself in the face with his keyboard. <laughs> but even if you make it through into the Ascension group, um, as one of the top seven teams out of the nine ta uh, out of the nine available in terms of playoff spots, your seeding is affected. 